Good morning, Michael here, looking again today at Psalms 13, specifically verse 2 and 3 for the exposition, the Psalms subtitled, How Long, O Lord? Verse 2, How long must I take counsel in my soul? and have sorrow in my heart all the day. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Verse 3 Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. And from the Treasure of David, as written by Charles Spurgeon, verse 2 How long shall I take counsel? in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily. There is in the original the idea of laying up counsels in his heart, as if his devices had become innumerable but unavailing. Herein we have often been like David, for we have considered and reconsidered day after day, but have not discovered the happy device by which to escape from our trouble. Such store is a sad sore, Ruminating upon trouble is bitter work. Children fill their mouths with bitterness when they rebelliously chew the pill which they ought obediently to have taken at once. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? This is like wormwood in the gall, to see the wicked enemy exalting while our soul is bowed down within us. The laughter of a foe grates horribly on the ears of grief. For the devil to make mirth of our misery is the last ounce of our complaint, and quite breaks down our patience. Therefore, let us make it one chief argument in our plea with mercy. Thus the careful reader will remark that the question, how long, is put in four shapes. The writer's grief is viewed as it seems to be, as it is, as it affects himself within and his foes without. We are all prone to play most on the worst string. We set up monumental stones over the graves of our joys. But who thinks of erecting monuments of praise for mercies received? We write four books of lamentations and only one of canticles and are far more at home in wailing out of misere than in chanting at a didium. That's some Latin for you. All right, let's read verse 3 then, exposition. But now prayer lifted up her voice, like the watchman who proclaims the daybreak. Now will the tide turn, and the weeper shall dry his eyes. The mercy seat is the life of hope and the death of despair. The gloomy thought of God's having forsaken him is still upon the psalmist's soul, and he therefore cries, Consider and hear me. He remembers at once the root of his woe and cries aloud that it may be removed. The final absence of God is Tophet's fire and his temporary absence brings his people into the very suburbs of hell. God is here entreated to see and hear that so he may be doubly moved to pity. What should we do if we had no God to turn to in the hour of wretchedness? Note the cry of faith, O Lord my God! Is it not a very glorious fact that our interest in our God is not destroyed by all our trials and sorrows? We may lose our gourds, but not our God. The title deed of heaven is not written in the sand, but in eternal brass. Lighten my eyes, that is, let the eye of my faith be clear, that I may see my God in the dark. Let my eye of watchfulness be wide open, lest I be entrapped. And let the eye of my understanding be illuminated to see the right way. Perhaps too here is an allusion to that cheering of the spirits, so frequently called the enlightening of the eyes, because it causes the face to brighten and the eyes to sparkle. Well may we use the prayer, lighten our darkness. We beseech thee, O Lord, for in many respects we need the Holy Spirit's illuminating rays, lest I sleep sleep of death.
Darkness engenders sleep, and despondency is not slow in making the eyes heavy. From this faintness and dimness of vision caused by despair, there is but a step to the iron sleep of death. David feared that his trials would end his life, and he rightly uses his fear as an argument with God in prayer, for deep distress has in it a kind of claim upon compassion, not a claim of right, but a plea which has power with grace. Under the pressure of heart sorrow, the psalmist does not look forward to the sleep of death with hope and joy, as assured believers do, but he shrinks from it with dread, from which we gather that bondage from fear of death is no new thing. Yes, indeed, times of trouble, a lot of times. <laughs> We see the doom. We see the end. <laughs> oh, was it not for a God to call upon? Well, Michael here, trust you enjoyed the meditation. Declaring yet again, Jesus is Lord. Until next time, peace.